Pat Miller program. Thank you, Pat. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you, sir. So, Sean, um, first of all, how weird is it that um, we've got emails missing, not missing, then showing up someplace else? I, I, I'm asking you to speculate here a great deal. How would emails between Mrs. Clinton and Mrs. Abedin get on the computer of Mrs. Abedin's husband? Does any of that make sense to you? Well, yes, it does. Um, you know, in, in the world that I work in, we see crazy things all the time. And part of the, the articles I read in looking at this over the weekend said they were in a folder that said something of the, the name of life insurance. I saw that, yep. And so it would be easy to simply take a PST file or take those emails and just copy them and put them on a thumb drive or a CD or something and drag them and load them in that folder on another laptop, even if it wasn't used to actually transmit them. But I don't know one way or the no another whether it was. It's an interesting thing to me that in hearing the conversations, and I don't know how much you've heard any of it today, Sean, but today it, it's like the positioning of Mrs. Abedin is, I have no idea how those got on his computer, as opposed to there's nothing wrong in those emails. It's all been disclosed before. There's nothing there. It's almost like she's setting herself up because she knows what's going to be found uh, is going to be a real problem. And it sounds to me she's almost trying to defend herself more against the wrath of Mrs. Clinton as she is against the law. Well, that may very well be the case. And uh, what she could, you know, part of what she may be thinking about is the fact that she gave sworn testimony last summer in a deposition. Yep. It said she turned over every device that had those all of it. Info yep. on it. Now let, let me ask you this question: yeah. what, what if at the time that she said that, and I'm just I'm nitpicking here. I'm trying to I'm trying to be a defense attorney for a minute. If she had all the files and she had put them on a thumb drive, just for backup, in her view at that moment, if the only place they existed was on that thumb drive, could you stand by the testimony that they were not on a device? Or, well, that they weren't on the laptop? Yeah. Sure. And and we've seen uh, people take far more incredulous positions than that uh, through a lot of this. So, yeah, she could say, I, I turned in the thumb drive. I had no idea that maybe Anthony got the thumb drive and copied it over onto the laptop. Um, you're in all this stuff and cybersecurity and you get this stuff. Totally forgetting the political aspects for a minute, okay? As soon as we heard that Mrs. Clinton as Secretary of State, had her own server at, on, on her own property, did that not make antennas fly up all over you? Sure, it's mind-boggling that someone would, would be that careless. Is yeah, it, I mean, what you have to understand is, look, cyber risks are out there for all of us, and you and I may have one level of cyber risk, and, and it's, it's true. We probably couldn't defend ourselves against nation states or, or others that really wanted it. Um, but when you're someone operating at that level, you know that the bad guys are out there trying to get you. And you have to have a commensurate level of security to protect yourself. And private citizens in most private companies don't have that level of, of defense capabilities. That's why we have these government systems. Now, for my part, being a little bit more political, I almost thought it was a little hilarious when Donald Trump, that kind of tongue-in-cheek at one of his speeches a couple of months ago, said maybe Russia wants to go ahead and release the rest of what they've got. And Mrs. Clinton's defense was, I cannot believe that Donald Trump is encouraging the Russian government to hack into our systems. Well, I've got news for her. If there was any hacking, it had already been done. I mean, it was over. Well let me tell you, Pat, you're right. And if you look at the timeline of what Trump said, he wasn't saying go hack. Right. He was saying find it and release it. Yep. And I've heard from very reputable sources that this information was obtained by the Syrian Electronic Army and has been available for, for a, quite a while. Really? Yeah, that they were the ones that actually obtained it, not the Russians, and that they've had this available on the dark net and that it's uh, already been turned over to both the FBI and WikiLeaks. So it's put up or shut up time for WikiLeaks. You know, when you look at governments like the United States, um, Korea, China, Russia, even friends like Israel, to have your own server like that and to have so little protection on it, 
aren't you just begging to be hacked? I mean, th- there are there are people that work for various governments, ours included, that trying to hack foreign foreign emails and foreign po- points of security is their full time job. Absolutely, we have the best in the world at it, and so you have to then ask yourself: Was you know, surely it wasn't intentional that you would want anyone to have access to that, but you know, how negligent is it to, to, I mean, you know, a lot of companies won't allow employees to use their own personal devices because they don't have appropriate security. We're talking about, you know, national secrets here. Now, I am, uh, one final question, and on this one, I am getting somewhat political here, and uh, you may not even be comfortable answering it. Um, Mrs. Clinton's first defense that, well, I we did this, because I wanted everything on one device because I didn't want to carry multiple devices. Well, we now know she actually carried up to 13 devices, at least two of them smashed with hammers in the after fact uh, by her associates. Uh, We know that she had, I think it was a total of four servers that she had used. This is not for convenience. I mean, you don't do this for the convenience of one phone instead of two or three you have to have a purpose to go through this much trouble to set up your own server, don't you? In, in my view, yes. It's inconceivable that that anyone with an unbiased mind at this point would look at this and, and, and not come away with the conclusion that there's at least something there that's not appropriate. And that, that's been my conclusion all along. And it just seems that more and more what's coming out now and for Mr. Comey to – take the incredible step two weeks before an election and to reopen things and to let Congress know he was doing it tells me there must be a whole lot of there there. So uh, just, it's it's just amazing to me. Sean, I appreciate your expertise. Uh, I always come at the, from the uh, right conservative angle of all things, but uh, I wanted to come at it with a little bit of your expertise behind the scenes. I appreciate it very much. If, if more gets out about all of this, uh, we may visit you again. I hope that's okay with you. That's certainly okay with me. I've enjoyed it, Pat. Thank you. Very good. Sean, thanks so much.